For a while I've been wanting to try epoxy resin casting and you need a um, vacuum chamber to degas it. So this video is about how I uh, went about making one and as you can see I'm in winter hibernation now and nasty outside so not much else that you can do this time of the year. So down to the shop and start playing. Um, I had this vacuum chamber sealer that was a prototype that I was testing and when I got done testing it I took it apart just to save the parts before I tossed it out and I did get a um, nice oilless vacuum pump out of it that I'm using for this uh, down to the 3D printer and I had to design and print an electrical box for it because uh, all the electrical components were just hanging out in there and stuff so took it apart so there's my first go around of the box you can see 3D printer is amazing, um, and it just, uh, you know, lets you prototype so fast. So I made some brackets to mount the box and, you know, a box to hold all the electronics, and then I decided I wanted to add a timer to it so I could just set the time and let it run. So second go around, this is what it looks like. And here it is out of the printer here. Uh, you can see when you print these things, all the openings have... Uh, these supports that are printed in place to uh, make sure the wall stays straight and everything. So you just pop them. Well, it's hard to pop out with one hand, but you just pop them out pretty easily, and uh, that's what you get. So it's really uh, fun, you know, having a 3D printer to be able to come up with stuff quick. Not UL listed or anything, but it works. And there's everything in the box. I had to do some tapping to get the electric input there, and power switch, timer, input with a fuse, and the capacitor. So that worked out good and I made some brackets to hang it off the pump uh, tie rods. And I just have to wash that uh, glue off the back of there from the bed of the printer. And I went to wire it together and I tried some of these Wago type connectors that I really like. Um, this brand I had trouble with a couple of them, these little levers breaking off of them, so I'm not sure if I'd recommend it because they're really hard to operate and every once in a while you lose a lever but they were cheap so um, I'll put a link down there and you know if you want to try them these are um, a cheap way to try them and they rate it for the voltage and they really do uh, make good connection so made wiring easy everything's in the box and I just have to tap some holes for the cover designed and printed a cover to go in there and that just closes everything up so I have a nice assembly that's fairly safe um, you know, it's not UL listed or anything else, but I think it's good. I'll be careful with it. And then when I went to plug it in, had a bad cord. And I'm going to tell you, it's that other video I showed you. Always check these offshore cords when you buy them. You never know. I don't trust them anymore. So I did get the timer programmed. Finally, once I went to the website and found the uh, information on it, I bought it off Amazon, and there's zero information on Amazon. And what it does is you press the start button, it has a countdown you have to do, and then it'll do a timed relay on cycle. Or you can set it up, there's like 12 different ways you can set it up. So um, you can have it keep cycling, you can have it cycle on and off, off and on. And really it's a handy little thing for like 12 bucks, so I'm going to use these in other projects now that I've played with it. I'll put a link down there if you want to, you know, look at them. So it runs for the, the time on the second one there, and then it turns off. So everything worked, uh, looked good. I printed some feet to go on there and put some rubber anti-slip pads on there and also some rubber vibration pads. And there I snuck a ground wire in underneath that. So everything looks to be safe. Uh, works good and I'm happy with it. This will power up my vacuum chamber. And I had to go and, you know, make up a sticker for it. I like putting stickers on stuff. So this is just a vinyl print and cut sticker I make up on my Cameo 4. And that kind of finishes that, that up. Then I'm just going to call it time delay chamber vacuum pump. But it is a nice airless pump. And actually, you can see it's hillbilly listed, so that means absolutely nothing. It's kind of like uh, some of the stamps you get from China. But anyhow, so I went on Vivor, and I found this three-gallon vacuum pot that I ordered. I bought this on the Try, 
and it looked good. It came with all the gauges and the, a hose and everything else. And I'm hooking this pump to it. And you can see it comes with the two valves, a gauge, all the fittings, a hose. And there's a glass top on it that's quite thick. It's about three quarters. All the vacuum seals. So it would have cost more to buy the parts to make one than it did to uh, buy this one. So I picked this one up. And it's another one of those Viver things. It's amazing what they make when you look at their catalog. And then I wound up printing a uh, holder for the cover when you take it off. So when you set it over on the side, you don't get any dirt in the seal area. Any dust or dirt can mess with that. But you can see that glass tops like three quarters of an inch, I think they said. Uh, there's a, another silicone seal. And if you look inside here, you can see it ain't pretty. The welds and stuff are, you know, not pretty. But it's three. Pe it's basically two pieces welded together. There's a cylinder there, and then the bottom is welded on it. So definitely this is not good for boiling water or cooking on the stove with. I think this could be dangerous. And the, the welds don't look all that fantastic, but... So far, what I'm seeing, they hold pretty good, and there are a couple burrs on it and stuff, but I guess that's what you're going to get for, the, you know, the price I paid for it. So everything's all hooked up, turned on, ready to go. And you just set this lid on the top there. It does, uh, I've had zero problems with sealing, and it seals beautiful. The valves uh, will hold the vacuum for 24 hours, I found out, and everything works good. So let's start it. So I'll hit the start button, and then this has a time out button before it starts. And then I found out that 55 seconds was the time it took to get this chamber to full vacuum. Now I thought that was really good because most vacuum chambers take, most of the chamber sealers take that long for a much smaller chamber. So here you can see it does, you know, that pump, that's a oilless pump so it is louder make a you know a little more loud a little more noise than a oil type pump but it works good pulls it down and I can get after 55 seconds I can get the full vacuum of about 28 inches which is as far as it will pull so I'm happy with it so this should um, work really great for the epoxy and also for the silicone mold material and stuff that I really bought it for. But then when I was down here playing with it, I was thinking, boy, everybody asked me, can you seal mason jars in uh, one of the chamber sealers? And let's see there, you can close that and just seal it, leave it sit for 24 hours, or you can vent it and take the lid off. So one of the biggest questions I get is, can you... Uh, seal mason jars and a chamber sealer and I'm always saying no and then I took and thought about it and I'm like boy this is just basically a giant chamber sealer when you look at it it does come with a silicone pad too and there's a top that I top support that I 3d printed you can see all that is it's got a couple of silicone rubber no slip pads on it and all that does is allows me to set the lid on it because I was afraid if I set it down on a surface, I'm going to pick up dust on that bottom because it's like a sticky silicone material at orange. But anyhow, back to this. So I decided that I was going to try doing mason jars in it, which this would be pretty amazing if we would do them too. So I found out I can, th in this three gallon pot, I can fit three quart mason jars or I can get four of the pints or I can get one and a half gallons set them in there and put the top on let it run well it's not that easy I, f I have to tell you I found out and I'll make another video about you know how I wound up getting around using it some of the things I had to make to keep a lid centered and weighted down and stuff like that but that's another whole story but yes it can be used to uh do mason jars and here's actually a half gallon jar will fit in there too and uh, these mason jars as long as you're in good shape and you check them for cracks and stuff they seem to uh, work good holding vacuum so now when you want to run it again just hit the button and hit the start button you see it counts down first and then the the pump starts and you can set that time for minutes seconds hours it's like so programmable it's unbelievable 
So I pumped it down and I'm going to let the uh, vacuum out. And, you know, it's really simple. Pick the top off and there's that half gallon jar. And I have to tell you, I got lucky with it sealing that time because uh, this lid's been used about 10 tries now. And it's perfectly flat and everything now, so it works first time. But there you can see it had a nice vacuum seal. So I just thought that I'd, you know, show you that I do do things during winter hibernation still. And, um, you know, this is my current project. And hopefully I'll get some uh, more videos out about um, doing epoxy molding and making silicone molds. And also, you know, doing how to do jars in this thing. If it, you know, and how easy it is and how, um, how well it works. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.